holy transitions. Hey, Power Director peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make the 1960s Batman transition from the Batman television show. If you think you might be giving this transition a try, in your next video, I want you to put hashtag Holy Transitions in the comment section below. All right, Power Director peeps, I kept you waiting long enough. Let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 17. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And if you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell to get notifications every single time I upload content to YouTube. Let's make some Batman magic. The 1960s Batman show had a quirky little transition that it used in between every scene. It has become an iconic transition in television history and it's recognized and used to this very day. So if you want to learn how to make this transition in Power Director, stick around and I'll show you how to get it done. As you can see, I have two pictures in the timeline. They are in the middle of the two video clips. Now I need these two pictures to make the transition. The transition effect has one picture that needs to spin and one picture that needs to zoom in and zoom out. The one that will spin is on track one and the one that will zoom in and out is on track two. Both pictures are three seconds in duration. So make sure that you change your picture's durations to three seconds. On the show, they always cut to transitions. They didn't fade in or fade out. So I have the video clips that are just gonna cut right to that middle spinning transition and then the video clip that's gonna show after it. Let's get this started by going with the picture that will spin, which is in track one. So I'm gonna left click on this. I'm gonna go up here to designer. Now I'm gonna go to PIP designer. I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the properties tab and then I'm gonna make sure that I'm under the object settings. And then I wanna come down to the rotation section. Now I also wanna make sure that for the timeline underneath the preview, I can see the rotation setting. And the first thing that I wanna do is add a keyframe to the beginning. So make sure that my playhead is all the way at the beginning and click on the keyframe button. We'll add a keyframe there. And then I want to move my playhead all the way to the end. And I want to add another keyframe here. So I'm going to click on the add a keyframe button. And at this position, I want to have my rotation all the way up to 7200. And I'm going to hit enter. This is going to make this bad boy spin and spin and spin. If I click on play, it's gonna spin around. See that? All right. Now, I also want to make sure that I am scaled in on this because I wanna make sure that it fills the frame. When it was spinning, you can see some black. It's not really filled all the way in. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I hit stop so that I can go ahead and scale this up. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the scale section. And I'm gonna scale this up pretty large here, right to about 228. So if I hit play now, I don't see any black. So I'm good to go. Now it's spinning really fast, but doesn't look that good to me. I want it to look like the show in Batman. So I need to add some motion blur to this. So I'm gonna go up here to the motion tab. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna come down to the motion blur section and I'm gonna click on this motion blur box. I'm gonna leave the blur length at one and the blur density at 16. 
Now if I click play now, that looks a lot better. Looks just like the old Batman show, I tell ya. <laughs> looks just like it. So now that we're done with that, let's work on the picture that will blur in and blur out. So let's click on OK. And now let's go down to the picture on track two, because this is the one that needs to zoom in and zoom out. I'm going to left click on it. I'm going to go up here to designer. I'm going to go to PIP Designer. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the Properties tab. And under Object Settings once again. And I'm going to go to Scale. And I want to make sure that Scale is visible here within the timeline so I can add keyframes. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my playhead is all the way at the beginning. I'm going to click on the add a keyframe button and I'm going to move my scale for my width all the way down to zero. So it's at 0 0.001 and that's going to make it start off where I can't see it on the screen. And then what I want to do is I want to move my playhead to the position right in the middle of this clip. So I know that this is three seconds. So I have a 24 frames per second timeline. So that means that 1.12 frames, one second and 12 frames should be right in the middle. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here. And at this position, I wanna scale it really far up. So I'm going to move the scale up to uh, right here, 1.228 is good. So that means it'll fill the screen. And then I wanna move my playhead all the way to the end of the clip and I can either add a keyframe or I could just move the scale. I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe here and I'm going to scale this all the way down to zero. So what that means is that at this first keyframe, it's going to be zero. It's going to fill up the screen. It's going to go back all the way down. So let's play this and show you what it looks like. So that looks okay, but it's just not there, just not yet, okay? Almost there. So first thing I wanna do is, I wanna go back to this middle keyframe. I'm gonna left click on it, and I want to ease in and ease out of this keyframe. So underneath the maintain aspect ratio for the scale section, I'm gonna click on ease in, and I'm gonna click on ease out. What that means is that when it moves towards this keyframe, when it gets close to it, it's going to slow down and ease into this position. And then it's going to ease out of this position and speed back up to get to the end. Now, I also want to kind of force speed it up a little bit myself by adding some additional keyframes close to this middle section. So I'm going to go back, I don't know, five frames. So at 107, I want to add another keyframe. And here, I'm actually going to change the scale down a little bit because I want it to slowly go up to here and then speed up real quick between these two because that's more closely to what it looks like on the show. So move this down quite a bit so that it speeds up really fast between those two keyframes. It's good right there. So I have it at 0.546. So I'm gonna go back to this keyframe and now I'm gonna move forward five frames. So we should be at uh, one second and 17 frames. I'm going to add another keyframe here. And once again, I want it to go really fast down to that same position the other one was, which was 0.0546. So I'm gonna move my scale down to 0 0.0546. And so now it's gonna slowly move up to 0 0.0546 and it's gonna really speed up fast to the middle. It's gonna speed up again down to 5.46 and it's gonna slowly speed back out. 
If I play this now, it should look like it's going to come from infinity. So the symbol is going to come out. Then it's going to quickly fill up the screen, quickly come back out, and slowly ease back out. So let's play it and see what it looks like. That looks like some Batman transition, if you ask me, baby. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now let's play this back on a timeline with the video clips to see what it looks like. Awesome sauce. Batman licious. I don't know if that's a word or not, but I'm using it today. I coined a phrase. There you have it, people. How to make the classic Batman transition in Power Director 17. Don't forget to check out more of my content to learn how to use Power Director. If you decide that you like Power Director 17 and you want to buy or upgrade to the software, I'll leave some links in the video description that you can use to purchase it. Those are affiliate links. So if you use them, I'll get a small commission, which will help me continue to create content that teaches you how to use Power Director. You'll pay the same price as if you went to the website on your own and purchased it. So if you want to help me help you, use the affiliate link. All right, Power Director peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. Truly means the world to me. Now, if you have any tutorial requests that you'd like me to make, please go to the video description and complete my tutorial request form. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, if you want more education, training, tips, and tricks on Power Director, you got to watch more of my content and you got to subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.